Hi everyone, welcome to Dr. Data Science Office Hours. Here we have today Stephen Hillen and Mike Alperin. Steve, we are starting something new this year, right? That's right, Nilima. thanks. Um, yeah, last year we had 12 great sessions where we went into various topics in considerable detail. Um, and what I wanna do this year is to focus on just one project um, actually, technically, it's an amalgamation of, of two projects that we've done um, for two of uh, TIBCO's customers from the data science team at TIBCO. Um, but it's really one holistic vision of what we can do to apply machine learning to a particular use case. And I want to take us through the entire history of that project and all the different aspects of what is involved technically uh, in terms of setting goals, uh, in terms of problems that we encountered, in terms of testing and deployment, everything in a data science project. As you know, we meet uh, as regular on the third Wednesdays of every month. So our next session will be on February 17th. And you can also catch up on all of our previous sessions on the Dr. Data Science YouTube channel if you search for TIBCO Dr. Data Science. Um, last time we had our usual structure where we had a quick info gain on hierarchical clustering and we looked into anomaly detection. Again, you can find that all on YouTube and I do encourage people to check those out. They're really uh, useful and we have some great guests from the data science team uh, explaining complex concepts very simply. But again, this year, we're gonna be focusing on the true story of a data science project. I'm gonna kick it off with an introduction now, uh, which I've called No End in Sight. Um, you'll see why in a second, really no data science project that I've, be, uh, that I've been on ever really truly ends. Models are always refreshed. There's new discoveries, new insights ready to be found. And I'm joined here by Mike Alperin, uh, who is our lead on this project. Um, he's on the data science team as a domain expert for high-tech manufacturing. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Hi. Nice to see you. Uh, big day for data science and for a few other things as well. But anyway, let's focus on data science here. Um, and this particular project, um, it all started with a question. Uh, one of our customers came to us and said, look, I do what you regularly do in high-tech manufacturing. I look at these wafers of silicon chips. These are, say, memory chips that are going to go into your phone. Each dot here roughly represents a chip, right, Mike? Yes, that, that's right. Um, and there's a lot of testing done on, on each one of those chips. Um, many parameters tested. And then in the end, you will decide whether a chip is good or bad. And all that data can be used to generate these patterns on wafers. And those patterns may actually map to, you know, specific problem causes back in the, in the process. So in this diagram here, essentially, simplistically, white is good and the color indicates something's gone wrong. Different colors indicate different levels of wrongness. But broadly speaking, you want sort of clear white patterns. And we see a couple here, especially down in the lower left where hmm, something seems to be gone wrong. And that one in the bottom right there, that almost seems like a scratch there. There's that sort of orange line that, that there are sort of patterns that, that reoccur, right? Sort of rings and scratches, that sort of thing. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, there are patterns that reoccur and, and often those patterns might be due to some kind of a, a fault at a specific process step. Um, so there's real value to kind of trying to classify these wafers according to the patterns that they have with the ultimate goal, you know, later to understand what the cause is. Right. So yeah, so the whole thing started with a question or a series of questions that we were asked, we, essentially, how do I find these things, right? Um, uh, there are many wafers coming through continuously, lots of different tests, lots of different patterns that might occur. How do I find those, find the ones I'm interested in, and then monitor them and really stop them from happening? So that's really the question. And although this is very specific to high-tech manufacturing, um, it is nevertheless true that almost all of the techniques that we're gonna be talking about in the series this year uh, apply across many different use cases and industries. And one thing that is also true across different industries and practices in data science is that while it starts with a question, you never know how the project is gonna go. And you're gonna see lots of different avenues and exploration and tangents that we go on. But the one guiding light was also always this question. And every so often Mike and I step back and say, let's remember what we're trying to do here, which is identify these anomalous incidents, track them down and stop them from happening. 
So that's our sort of pollster. Where are we today? Let me give you a quick review of uh, what the team has done. Um, if you see here on this dashboard, uh, we've got wafer maps being represented and we've sort of clustered those together to identify different types of patterns. So automatically, the, the user doesn't have to search through these anymore. We're automatically gonna suggest these different clusters. Here, for example, just one cluster shows this sort of heart shape and the user can sort of drill into those um, take a look, maybe look at some other clusters. Here's another one that almost also looks like uh, a heart and the user can select those then and create new super clusters, uh, joining clusters together, adding things in and out to come up with what they regard as the heart shape and some samples of that. Uh, so it's a little bit of semi-automated, uh, these clusters suggesting these patterns and then human guided by adding new wafers in and taking those out that the, the engineer uh, decides a truly the heart pattern of interest. And once we've got that semi-automated grouping of uh, wafer maps, we can actually then start to build a model with that. And we actually do this in an iterative way. So we build the model, make it have predictions. Here we see that it's made some predictions. We use this confusion matrix over here to find those the, the model hasn't identified, but we decide actually probably are the heart patterns. So here we've got some that look like donuts, some that look like hearts. We pick out the hearts, add those back to the target group and rerun the model, get the suggestions back, use the confusion matrix and so on. Then what we do is we can deploy the model to identify this particular group of anomalous patterns. And we can deploy that on streaming data so that as wafers come in off of the factory floor, we automatically disposition them according to this model. In this case, we're seeing this donut pattern. It's scarily high. There's a lot of donut patterns appear appearing off the factory floor. And so we can drill into those now and see what's going on. So we've created this dashboard and that actually has a lot of technology and data and techniques behind it. We're gonna drill into all of those um, in this. Uh, but fundamentally guiding it is this idea, Mike, you were calling this, um, it, it's semi-automated. I think one of our data scientists called it uh, almost like um, semi-supervised learning where you have this interaction between um, unsupervised methods with the clustering, supervised methods with, the, um, uh, with this classification model here, human guidance as we continually reconstruct the target group and, and so on. Um, it's, it's pretty novel, right, Mike? Yeah, and, and I think that's really important what you just said, Stephen. It, it's the idea that, you know, we're going to use the best data science we have to make recommendations, but we always have that subject matter expert in the loop. You know, this is the person that really probably understands, you know, what generates these patterns. And so we always let the, you know, let the person, um, the, the user make the kind of final decisions about what goes in each group. And that's key here. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to go into the different sessions that we have planned for this year to show how we have this interaction between very usable visual dashboards, complex models, uh, image transformations, streaming data, deployment of models at the edge, lots of different aspects of a data science project all brought to the fore with this really very simple use case, which is something weird is going on in the manufacturing process, help me identify it from massive data, and then help me drill into it. Talking of drilling into it, uh, if we go to this uh, next dashboard here, also in, in TIPCO Spotfire, what we actually do is we say, okay, fine, this, this anomalous donut pattern or heart pattern has come on, if, uh, come on off the uh, factory floor. And preceding that has been a whole bunch of manufacturing process steps. This what takes days or even weeks, Mike? How long does this take in all these different sensors, right? Yeah, weeks to months, actually. And at every point, a sensor is tracking what's the temperature, pressure, uh, and so on. And what we've been able to do using big data and variable selection techniques and a whole bunch of magic that again, we're gonna be going into, we can actually isolate a particular sensor in a particular process step that seems to indicate that the donut pattern, for example, is gonna occur. So here we've got two sensors that are particularly high on our list of variable importance, if you like. Um, uh, and we can drill into those and see immediately then, yeah, for the donut pattern, there seems to be a drop in pressure or a drop in temperature or whatever it might be. Yeah, and, th and that's a really, um, 
you know, very valuable um, type of thing to do, right? If you think about it, you have this very complicated process with lots of different process steps. And at each process step, you have um, equipment and possibly many sensors on each piece of equipment. And, you know, finding your way through that to kind of find the needle in the haystack to find, you know, the, the machine and the step and even the sensor that, you know, that that shows a relationship um, to the problem that you're looking for, that can be very tedious and time consuming. And so having the ability at least to get a first cut at this and just push a button and get some candidates, um, you know, that, that could be um, causing that problem um, saves a tremendous amount of time. Time and money, right? I mean, if you have, sometimes these, you know, these patterns will occur and then they reoccur time and time again, as we saw in that streaming chart, and that can cost, what, how much, like millions? Yeah, I mean, definitely money, because if you solve a problem like weeks earlier, then that's like weeks of not producing bad product for that time, so. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so that's more or less where we are right now in the project. As I said, there's no end in sight, right? We're continuing to refine this. Where are we at this point, Mike? We produce these dashboards, right? We've got this big data processing to do the root cause analysis. Yeah, so I mean, right now, um, you know, we have a, a good application for creating the models and doing batch scoring for medium sized data sets. Um, really, what's next is we're working on a, on a new architecture um, to kind of scale this up to larger data sets um, and, and also um, work on real time scoring. And, and beyond that, their ideas are about kind of extending this to kind of multi-parameter classification and even doing anomaly, um, you know, AI-based anomaly detection first and then looking for patterns in the anomalies. So there's um, infinite number of great ideas about extending this. Yeah, and we'll actually address one of those, uh, some of those new ideas in, in our final session. Let's actually talk about the sequence here um, of, uh, of the Dr. Data Science series for 2021. Um, so we've got our introduction. Um, next month for our first in-depth session, we're actually gonna be doing a sort of crossover episode with Dr. Spotfire. Um, and Neil's gonna be joining us to look at how we started this whole project with an exploratory data analysis, just looking at the wafer patterns, figuring out what the data looked like. So a lot of null values, which we're gonna be dealing with in, in session three. So I'm really looking forward to that, to see how Spotfire can be used uh, to really understand the data and guide the rest of the investigation. Uh, as I mentioned in, in episode three, we're gonna be looking at how we had to transform the data, filling in some of those null values, dealing with the radial nature of the wafer maps, uh, dealing with essentially images and how to transform those structured and unstructured data. Um, so that classic phase of data wrangling and, and data transformation will be covered in episode three. You right, saw, and Stephen, uh, there were quite a few innovations there too, right? I mean, we started out with one method of doing the transforms, but then, you know, someone had a wonderful idea about doing it a different way. And so we'll cover that. Yeah, we got a, a crazy variant of Fourier transformations that are involved there. Yeah, some, some real innovation in the transfer. As so often is the case in these data science projects, the modeling is actually, in some sense, straightforward. It's how you get the data to the models that's, that's the interesting bit. Um, in episode four, we're going to be talking about those clusters. So how we identified the particular wafer map patterns automatically. There can be dozens, not hundreds of different patterns in a given uh, factory process. And so identifying those naturally occurring patterns is a subject of clustering. And of course, we start with classic methods like k-means, but we quickly find ourselves having to innovate in, in that area as well. Then we get into that iterative modeling process that we showed you in that short video where we have the human interaction using the confusion matrix to identify things that the model hasn't found and rebuild the model in real time. Uh, and then, of course, we have to deploy that model. As Mike said, we're now in the process of getting that to scale and having that run on streaming data, have it running on batch data going back many months. Um, and not just the wafer maps themselves, which are big enough, but also all of that sensor data. We're really talking about very wide, very large data sets. And so how do you deploy that uh, is, the, is the subject of, of chapter six. And then another form of deployment is how you get that to the end user. So we'll be talking about um, methods and best practices for the user experience in the dashboards and how we created those and tested them with uh, real factory engineers to make sure that they got the job done. Um, 
As we start to drill down then into the root cause analysis, we start to bring in that sensor data, which is time series data. And so having to deal with a large number of very long time series and normalize those across different sensors and across different metrics, um, we had to innovate in that area as well. So we'll be discussing our time series work in episode eight. And then in episode nine, how do we take that big mass of variables, not just the sensors, but other variables as well, and winnow those down so that we can get back to the end user to say, this is the source of the problem. This is the sensor, this is the process step, step that you should be taking a look at. I've already mentioned uh, how we had to wrestle with big data. We'll take a step back in episode 10 then to really look at where we got to in our architecture. Hopefully by episode 10, we'll have settled on the architecture that we're gonna be used. So you're really gonna be viewing the evolution of this project in real time. We've already solved a lot of the problems in terms of scalability by using parallel methods and Hadoop and Spark uh, and other data sources, uh, pushing things to the cloud uh, to leverage compute scalability. So we'll touch on those subjects in episode 10. Episode 11, you know, when I was going over this uh, program with one of the data scientists, he said, what about the testing? And I was like, how could I forget? It's so important, something that's often forgotten as I did in data science projects is the testing of this. It's actually going on throughout, but we'll take a special step back to look at how we apply testing throughout the process and then towards the end for usability, for scalability, for accuracy uh, and, and so on. And then finally, Mike and I will get together at the end and we'll say, where are we going next? What are all the other avenues that we'll explore? And what can we learn broadly about how to run a data science project and how to deal with all the conflicting priorities and changes uh, as we go through? So I'm really excited to do this. Mike, thanks for helping me launch it. Any final thoughts? Um, yeah, final thoughts are, I mean, if we just zoom out for a second, um, this is a, an example of kind of finding patterns in you know, one particular um, case, these kind of round wafer maps and it's for a specific industry. Um, but if you zoom out a little bit, um, you know, with the advent of kind of IoT and all these connected sensors, there's a tremendous amount of data available that has um, temporal patterns and spatial patterns. Um, you know, anything with an image may have patterns in it, but there also be patterns and sounds. And I believe that you know what we're going over here is uh, um, could be turned into like a general method. Um, the details might vary at each one of these steps, but I mean, I think this is a general method for dealing with detection of those patterns. And this is like a, a really important area. I think because human beings are very, very good at detecting patterns. Um, you know, we're really kind of, our brain is really wired for it. Um, and, you know, the ability to start to automate some of that is, um, is very exciting. Um, and great. it's kind of a new area. It is. Great, thanks, Mike. That's a great summary. I totally agree. It's a, this interaction of the human element and the automation is, I think, the, the common theme here. So join us next month for this crossover episode with Dr. Spotfire, where we'll be using exploratory data analysis techniques to look for the needle in the haystack. Uh, it's, got a, it's gonna be a lot of fun, um, 12 uh, episodes throughout this year, and who knows where it'll end. So join us. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.